you? Brother? You gonna open the door? Come on in. What you sitting up here in the dark for? Uh, cooler. Bob heats up the room. Hey, sister. No. Now, how you gonna gnaw me before I even ask the question? If you start that old sister stuff, I know you're getting ready to ask for money. And since I ain't giving nobody no money to play the numbers with, the answer is no. Ain't aiding the betting nobody in gambling. What you looking for? Whiskey. Whiskey. Oh, I'm surrounded by whiskey heads. Keep on, you're gonna be done drunk your fool self to death. That's what my wife Norley used to say. Doc, sweet honey, you gonna keep on drinking that old whiskey till it kills you. I told her I'd be drinking whiskey when the railroad track was running over her head. She been dead 20 years now. You're gonna have to give an account of that old random talk when Jesus gets back here and looks up your record. I'm almost 60, and he ain't made it back here since I've been here. And I'm beginning to think maybe he ain't coming back. Can't say I blame him after the raw deal he got the last time he was here. What the? Hey, you chaps, get your butts off of my car before I come down there and locate my stick in the vicinity of your hind parts. Please do not holler out my window. You've never seen nothing like these chaps in all my body. I don't days. reckon they ever seen anything like you before either. Dressed like that, driving that old car, walking around here in warm weather with gloves on. I told you men don't wear gloves no more. Second time today somebody mentioned my glove. Will you please not write your numbers in my house? What's that old mess? Lucky all. Last month it was incense. Hit for twenty-five dollars, didn't it? Burning incense in the YMCA. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You better get ready if you want me to drive you to church. I'm ready. Well, come on. Just try and wait for Alberta to get back here. Oh, don't reckon somebody done hit her over the head and dragged into one of them old deserted buildings. You sound like some of Mama's old random talk. Mama had second sight. Maybe Alberta run off like a no-good father. That's what Gardner Warren did. Just walked out of here one evening. A non-smoker who went out with a famous pack of cigarettes and ain't been heard from since. All we did like old Gardner Warren. Used to love to watch that man eat fish. Never saw anything like it in my life. The man would put fish in one side of his mouth, work his lips, and the bone would shoot out on the other side. <laughs> Yes, sir. It was like watching a machine. Hello, Mama. Uncle Doc. Hi, Alberta. What are you two sitting up here in the dark for? Waiting on you. Waiting on me for what? I told you this morning before you went to work that Brother would be by this evening to take us to church. Didn't you hear me tell you this morning that I wasn't going to church this evening? Sister Martin sitting down in Mount Hope this very minute waiting on you. To give you the information. Did you tell that woman I was going to write her son's obituary? I don't know why in the world you keep telling people that I'm going to write their obituaries for them. Ain't nobody write them like you can. Everybody say that. Folks still talking about the one you wrote and recited for Emmanuel Fisher. I threw that away. You threw Emmanuel Fisher's obituary away? Didn't I just say I did? You mean you didn't keep a copy of it? What does throw it away mean? But you can remember how it went and write it out, can't you? I have erased it from my mind. Why? Because I didn't want to remember it. I bet you could if you put your mind to it. What'd you call it? The Flight of the Purple Angels. Tell Brother how it went. It was about the Purple Angels coming to take him home. Coming to take him to the land of glory. Alberta just got carried away. Didn't he, Albert? Mama, you're going to be late for church. Yeah, you're holding me up. Brother ain't never heard to do it for brother. Mama, will you please go to church? Come on, we you be going. And if you're still up when I get back, Mama brings you some ice cream. And you be a good girl, and don't you open that door till you hear my voice. A lot of robbing and folks getting hit over the head going on. Mama bring you some ice cream.
me, ma'am. Who? Blind Jordan. Blind Jordan? Who do you want to see? Grace Waters. Grace Waters? You must have the wrong apartment. There's no Grace Waters living here. May I speak to you for just one moment, ma'am? What for? Please, ma'am, please. I told you no Grace Waters lives here. Please, may I speak to you? Nobody by that name. Oh. Come in. Thank you, ma'am. Now, you say you're looking for Grace Waters? Do you know which apartment she lives in? No, ma'am, I sure don't. I ain't even sure she lives in this building. Well, how are you going to... No, she lives somewhere on State Street in Chicago. So I've been going from building to building, door to door, inquiring about her. Grace Waters. I don't know anybody offhand by that name in this building. She could be rooming. What does she look like? Oh. I'm sorry. Well, you don't have to be sorry, ma'am. I'm used to it. I've been blind a long time. It's part of my name, Blind Jordan. I don't reckon you heard him of me up here, but down home I'm known all the way from East St. Louis to New Orleans. Ma'am, I was wondering, would you mind giving me a glass of water? Surely. Well, thank you, ma'am. I was just about dried up. Somehow, I can't seem to get used to this Chicago water. Takes a little while, I reckon. Here you are. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. You like music, ma'am? Oh, yes, I like music. Sure would like to play you, too. I'd like to hear you, but there's no one here but me. Oh, I don't mean you're no harm, ma'am. No harm in this world. I'm not afraid, Mr. George. I thought I'd play you a little tune in exchange for something to eat. Are you hungry, Mr. Jordan? Ma'am, I'm so hungry till I am weak. Oh, come on into the kitchen. Well, could you direct me? Oh, certainly. some of the stuff out of your way. What's this? Just something I made. Crepe paper flour? You know about crepe, <laughs> crepe paper flowers, Mr. Jordan? Yes. It's made out of colored crepe paper and paste with pieces of wire for steel. Down home folks don't always have money to buy real flour, so they make their own. I never liked them. Same with artificial fruit. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to belittle your gift. I'd hardly call it a gift, Mr. Jewett. Now, let me see what's in here. Oh, anything will do me, ma'am. You don't have to put yourself out none whatsoever for me. The leftover in your supper will suit me just fine. I'll make you a sandwich, some milk. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Mind if I ask your name? Alberta. Alberta. Alberta Warren. Alberta, let your hair hang low. Alberta, let your hair hang low. I'll give you all the gold that your apron will hold if you just let your hair hang low. Alberta, what is on your mind? Alberta, what is on your mind? You keep me worried and bothered all of the time in Alberta. <laughs> what is on your mind? <laughs> oh, that was very nice. I don't think I ever heard that song before. Oh, my father taught me that song. He was blind like me. Runs in the family. He was one of the great blind street singers, known all the way from Vicksburg to Jackson. 
Yes, sir, everybody know Big Blind John, king of the 12 string guitar. There used to be a lot of blind street singers in them days. Now there's only a few of us left. All passed on with the coming of the piccolo. How did you get here to Chicago? Hmm. Part by car, part by foot. We just followed the direction and started putting one foot in front of the other. How long have you been looking for her, Grace Waters? A long time. Sometimes it seems I ain't never not been looking for her. Well, I reckon I better be getting along. Oh, let me get my coat and I'll help you down the stairs. Oh, no, no, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, 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 could you tell me what's the number of this building? It's the, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Now, let me see. You want to know the number of this building? Why, the number of this building is 3868 State Street. 3868 State Street. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Carmen, man. I know where to start tomorrow. Do you have any money? Well, I'll just walk along and play to somebody. Put something in my hand. Here. Oh, thank you, man. And if you're ever hungry or tired. Good night, man. Good night. Good night. Should have gone to the cemetery. The cards are all filled up. Every funeral car was packed with his family. Isaiah didn't have a load. We could have rode with him. Mama, I asked him. Said he'd be glad to drive us up and that we'd have to find another way back. We could have caught the bus. You know how long it takes to get back from that cemetery by bus. We'd be all night getting back here. <laughs> this show did a good job on him. Just like he did in life. I remember when you and him was in the Sunshine Band. I don't remember him being in the Sunshine Band. You don't remember being in the Sunshine Band with A.J. Martin? I don't remember ever seeing him before today. The way you and him used to play together around the church when you was little. Honey, <laughs> I can't remember him. Yeah. But he sure was a nice-looking man. Oh, A.J. Martin was a fine-looking man. Who was that calling out for him? Kept screaming his name. That was Letty Wentworth. She was crazy about him. Hadn't been for Sister Martin, I think A.J. might have married her. She sure did perform this day. <laughs> she really put on a show. <laughs> when she was carrying on, I thought he was going to raise up in that casket. <laughs> she just showed out. Just showed out. And the way you read that obituary, you had that whole church stirred up. One woman just fell out and went kicking. Another one leaped up and danced the dance of happiness. There wasn't a soul in that church wasn't touched by the Holy Ghost. And the way you read them telegrams, I tell you, Alberta, it was something to behold. You got a gift, honey. A calling. Yes, Lord. You like scared me to death, though, when you fell out of the pulpit like you done. You almost fell in the casket, fainting like that. Sure scared me. You shouldn't be drinking that whiskey. I need something for my nerves. I was supposed to give you them fainting spell. I didn't have a fainting spell. The ushers had to come and revive you. Keep on drinking that whiskey. I just lost my balance and fell. Did you drink any of that whiskey before you went to the funeral? My nerves were bad. You mean you was up in the church, standing in the pulpit, drunk as a skunk? I was not drunk. I just had a little taste. Wonder you didn't want to go to the cemetery. Glad now we didn't go. Folks find out you was drunk. Oh, Lord. The child just turning into a whiskey head. A whiskey head? I am not a whiskey head, and I wasn't drunk at the funeral. Then how come you fall out for that? I don't know. I, I just got weak all over, start having heat flashes. Heat flashes? Shh. What? 
Don't talk so loud. Don't talk so loud. The walls have ears. You mean the walls have ears? It's just that someone, someone may be listening to us. Nobody listening to us. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Someone may be out there. Ain't nobody out there. How do you know? Ain't nobody out there. Ain't a soul out there. I thought I heard something. Why don't you go lay down for no, a while? No, I don't want to lay down. Just for half an hour. No, I don't so. want to lay down. Well, don't carry on so. Just leave me alone, please. You're not going to drink any more of that whiskey. Mama, please. Jesus, please, 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 Jesus. You are already not feeling well. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'll see you later. Alberta? Yes. Never mind. Nothing. Now here's another one. Uh-huh. And it ain't got the name of no doctor on it either. Why she scratches the labels off the box? Maybe she figured you'd be rambling around in the room. I don't know why she'd think that. She ain't never caught me rambling around in the room. Pink pills. Lord, what's a child doing with so many pink pills? If the voice of the Lord came out of wall and told you, I bet you'd break your neck getting out of here. Brother, I need you to help me. I ain't putting in no numbers for you. You have to do that yourself. I'll just wait till you get through cutting the food. All right, sweetie. I want you to help me to find out what doctor she's going to. Why don't you just ask her? If she intended for me to know, don't you think she'd have told me by now? If she intended for you to know, I reckon she would have. And she goes to the doctor on Saturday. And next Saturday, you could be parked out there and follow her. Spy on it? Just what are you planning on paying for the service? Hello, Mama. Uncle Doc. How did my medicine get out here? Well, I was just showing Brother how appetizing they're making medicine these days, wasn't it, Brother? Stop spying on me. Ain't nobody spying on you, crazy woman. Who you think is interested in your medicine? And you needn't be scratching the labels off the bottle so I won't know who your doctor is. Oh, that's why you were rambling through my things. You in on this, too? I was just being recruited by the Secret Service Detailed Betrayal. Will you please not ask people to spy on me? I ain't asking nobody to spy on me. Didn't you ask me to find Will out you who shut a up? doctor was? Well, you've taken complete loss of your mind. Before long, the men in the white coats will be on your tail, carrying you off to the Kankakee Insane Asylum. Why don't you call in the police? Send a letter to Mr. Hoover. You better stop it, Mama. You just better stop. One day, I swear to God, I'll walk out of here and never look back. Will you please not take the Lord's name in vain in my presence? You sound like a street woman. You have tried my patience for 30 odd years. Eating up the food I buy. Sleeping out the bed clothes I have to buy. And on top of that, driving me out of what little mind I have left. Just let me straighten out your behind before it goes too far. I don't have to stay here and take this kind of abuse. Before I take abuse from a child I birthed into the world, I pick manure with the birds. You will have to stay here and take this kind of talk. What's she doing? Getting a suitcase. She moving again? Uh-huh. I got too much grip in my car to stay anywhere where I ain't want. Where you going this time? Anywhere away from here. Before I'll stay where I ain't wanted, I'll take up residence in the old folks' home. You bore those folks to death. Just because I'm concerned about your health, there's no reason for you to mistreat me. I never spoke a harsh word to my mother the longest day she walked this earth. 
spying on you. You have not heard me say a single solitary thing about spying on you. Have you heard me utter a half a syllable about spying on you? That if you want to listen to the random talk of folks with fugitives from the authorities of the Kankakee Insane Asylum, you go right ahead. Don't worry about me none. Because I got grit in my crawl. Always did have. I give you up into the hands of the law. For I have fought the good fight. And if you want to go sneaking off to the doctor and not tell nobody about the nature of your complaint, ain't nothing I can do. If you don't tell me, your own mother, what underwent the pains of death to bring you into this world, who struggled with you when your old father walked off and left you without a crust of bread on which to exercise your stomach muscles, who worked like a very dog to put shoes on your feet and give you a place to lay your head. Oh, oh. That's why I keep having this hurting in my side now. Working myself to death, supporting folks. When I close my eyes in death, you'll realize that I was the best friend you ever had. Goodbye, Mama. All right. <laughs> Where do you think she'll go? Around the corner to have some ice cream with some chocolate syrup on it. You know what you ought to do? You ought to run like hell. Run like the building's on fire. Run the parks unknown. Satchel up. Go even if you gotta leave here walking. Run, run where? What about Mrs. Petrell? Ain't they been after you to stay on the place? Yes. Get a day off and come see Weedy. Mrs. Cottrell is almost as bad as Mama. She works my tongue palate out now. I know what she'd do if I was living there. I on the phone not talking about me. Promising people to loan me out to them. Like I was some kind of a thing. I don't know what she and Mr. Cottrell think I am. Telling me I'm a member of the family. <laughs> Just like one of the family. What I ought to do is one night after I fix dinner, is to sit down with them at the table. See if they'll let one of the family sit down and eat with them. <laughs> Accusing me of stealing their whiskey. I they gave it to you. No, I steal it. And everything else I can get my hands on that they got. Keep on, you're going to have your behind arrested. Mr. Cottrell would never stand for that. He wouldn't have my behind to pinch on anymore. He does that. He's been pinching my behind since the first day I walked into that house 15 years ago. Why, oh, that dirty I wish I could. In the old days down on Beale Street, I used to handle a lot of money, a lot of money. Wouldn't have been nothing me to walk up and hand you a couple hundred. I always kept that kind of money in my pocket. Your old uncle was a legend on that street. Wore a diamond stick pen, pistol in my pocket at all times. Nobody wouldn't dare to mess with none of my kin folks. I don't care who they was. Because Sporting Jimmy Sweet did not take no mess. Mm -hmm. Here's Mama now. She must have forgotten her key. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sweet, this is Mr. Jordan. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Sweet. How do you do? You haven't by any chance heard of a woman by the name of Grace Waters, have you, Mr. Sweet? Grace Waters? Jordan is looking for her. He came all the way up from the old country, searching for her. What boss in the Bigfoot country are you from? It's sort of all over. Grace Waters. No, I don't recollect meeting nobody by that name. You see, Chicago's a big place to be looking for someone unless you know where to put your hands on them. I'll find her. Well, I reckon I better pick up Pearl. Do what I'd pick up after work. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Jordan, you ain't uh, had any good dreams lately, have you? 
You play the numbers, Mr. Sweet? I've been known to drop a dollar on a figure once in a while. Try triple zeros. Triple zeros? Sounds good. Of course, they all sound good. You get on it, you stay on it. It's gonna fall soon. How soon? Well, I can't give you the exact date, but it won't be long. Okay, I'll put something on it. See you, Alberta. See you, Mr. Jordan. Goodbye, Mr. Sweet. I didn't know you'd be around this evening. Thought I'd get through that big building this evening. When we stopped at the other day. That's an awfully big building, Jordan. Might take two or three days to get through it. Well, you ain't got nothing but time. And it's Saturday. Getting late. Folks don't like to be disturbed on Saturday evening. Well, they don't have to open the door. All they have to do is say whether or not Grace Waters is living there. Suppose she was living in that big building. Suppose we knocked on the right door. All she would have to do is say that she didn't live there and we'd walk right on away. Oh, no, I know her voice too well for that. Somebody else can answer the door and say she didn't live there. I come within a hundred feet of her, I know it. Half the buildings around here are under the order of condemnation. So well, that's why I need your help, to point out the ones that still got people living in them. It's not that I don't want to help you, Jordan. Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. Now you think you're not safe with me? You think because of my affliction, you're not safe with me? Maybe it's just that I'm tired. I guess it can be exhausting helping me. Why don't we wait and do it tomorrow? Tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow afternoon would be a good day. About the time people get home from, from church, people are in a good mood then. But I have no mind set on this evening. Why can't you wait until tomorrow? And lose a whole day? I don't want to lose a whole day. Oh, then go on. Since you can't wait, you go right ahead. And I hope you fall and break your neck. What? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that, Jordan. Oh, you're upset. I've done something to you. No. Well, what is it? It's got nothing to do with you. You want to tell me? There's nothing to tell. Well, I reckon I better be getting along. Maybe so. Oh. Oh, Mama. I didn't know you had company. Mama, this is Mr. Jordan. Jordan, this is my mother, Mrs. Vanilla Warren. Mrs. Warren? How do you do? I didn't expect you back so soon. Just come back for a minute. While waiting for the bus, I had an acute attack of the missed meal cramp. Did you ever have an acute attack of the missed meal cramp, Mr. Jordan, sir? Oh, yes, sir. I've had so many wrinkles in my stomach that sometimes I thought it was a prune. Well, you must stay for supper. Oh, I don't want to put you out none. Oh, you would be putting us out none? Just come on in the kitchen here. Alberta likes company. Don't you, Alberta? How do you think some warmed up pork chops would be? In this warm weather, my stomach wouldn't have time to settle before my bedtime. And I sure ain't going to bed with no pork unsettled in my stomach. To die during the night with a case of acute indigestion. Jordan, sir, did you ever hear of anybody to die from a case of acute indigestion brought on by the eating of pork in warm weather? Oh, yes, sir. I knew a man down home once had a nagging wife, lived about 25 miles down below New Orleans. Well, sir, one night in August, he fixed that woman some pork chops. And she died that very same night from a case of acute indigestion. Of course, they found out later he had cooked them in lie. <laughs> you sure know some strange folks. Mama, he's joking. Are you joking me, Mr. Jordan, sir? Tell her you're joking, otherwise she'll swear I'm trying to poison her. I'm kidding you, Mrs. Warren. Oh, so you're a kidder, Mr. Jordan. Always did like a kidder. Yes, sir. It's one thing I always did like it was a kidder. How long you been a kidder, Mr. Jordan, sir? Remember man down home once was a kidder? Kidden Sidney, they called him. Always liked the kid folks. One day, Kidden Sidney kidded the wrong man, and he shot poor Kidden Sidney right dead in the mouth, and Kidden Sidney didn't kid no more. Suppose I just make some pork and beans. That's what they feed convicts. You don't have to fix me nothing, Albert. Oh. Not going to eat, Mr. Jordan, sir? No, ma'am. I reckon I done lost my appetite. I guess I'll be getting along, Alberta. All right, I'll see you to the door. Now, Mrs. Warren, 
I want to thank you kindly for your hospitality. Goodbye, Mr. Kidder. I mean, Mr. Jordan. I wish you'd learn how to act nice. <laughs> Don't have to learn how to act nice. Ain't running for office. I've been elected. Thought you were hungry. Oh, I reckon I lost my appetite, too. Where are you going? Catch some air. With the blind man. His name is Jordan, Mama. Oh, I didn't mean no harm. Maybe I'll take a walk with him. Sure hate to stay here all by myself. Suppose I had a stroke while you gallivanting up and down the street. You're not going to have a stroke. How do you know? Is Almighty consulting you about his plans? I could be laying out here with my mouth all twisted up like poor Molly Ross. Molly Ross? It's Jordan singing. Live down the block, across the street. Molly Rose. Died today, poor soul. I don't think I knew her. Of course she didn't. You never paid her no attention. She wasn't none of your equal. What did she look like? Stout woman. Walked with a cane. Sure was fat. I never know a woman her age that fat before. Oh, that woman. What was her name? Molly Ross? Sure was a good company keeper. Used to sit here and keep me company all day long. Mama. She always a good company keeper. Take a coat. Maybe you ought to, just in case it turns cold. Generally, slurts leave weather down there. This suitcase ain't big enough. You should have took mine. Yours is too big and clumsy. You got too much stuff in here. The same amount I put in there every year. Maybe the suitcase has gotten smaller. Ain't a thing wrong with that suitcase, not a thing. Well, I can't get it closed. Well, let me try. Never get it closed. Now, Mama, why don't we just take everything out and pack it in mine? I don't want that thing. Don't want me bothered with it. Why, it's big and almost brand new. I like this one. Mm. Mama, you can't get this thing closed. Here. Yeah. Now, fasten it quick. <laughs> this thing is going to bust wide open. You never busted on me before. <laughs> you must have more in there to You just lock it. <laughs> Hope it don't jump open on you on the train. <laughs> oh, your underwear. Both of you never seen underwear before. Won't know what it is. <laughs> <sighs> what you gonna do about this coat? Oh, I don't reckon I need it. Could carry it on your arm. I don't feel like fooling with it. Suit yourself. But suppose it turns cold. It ain't gonna turn cold. <sighs> sure wish you was coming with me. You ain't never been to a convocation. You ought to go at least once in your life. I can't afford to go. I'd help you with your ticket. I can't get off my job for two weeks. Well, why don't you call up Miss Cottrell and tell her that you've got to be out of town for a couple of weeks. Take care of some business. Mom, I don't want to go to the convocation. We can't even afford for you to go. Convocation's the only little pleasure I get out of life. That and church. Honey, you going down there and throwing away. We could use that money to fix up this apartment. What's wrong with this apartment? Furniture's old, worn out. I'd like to get some new pieces for the living room. Ain't nothing wrong with this furniture. It's old and under heels. It's a whole lot better than the junk they're making today. At least I could get some slip covers to put over it. That big chair needs to be reupholstered. And the couch. That thing should have been thrown out years ago. That couch is still good. Why are you gone? I think I'll have somebody come up here and take that thing out of here. And what are we going to do for a couch? I'll try to get a new one. You just leave this couch right alone. Had this couch before you was born. The springs are coming through. Every time I sit on it, it sticks right in my behind. Then keep your behind off of it. I better not come back here and find this couch missing. Well, I'm sure gonna get rid of it. No, you ain't. What got into you? Just gonna throw my stuff off without my permission. You love that damn worn-out old couch so much, why don't you stay here and watch it? Now, how can I stay here and watch it if I'm going to the convocation? You talk foolish. Don't go. Stay here and watch it. 
Nail it down before you leave. Don't have to nail it down. You ain't got no business fooling with it. Then I'll nail it down for you. What you fixing to do? I'm gonna nail it down. Don't you put no nails in my furniture. I want to make sure it's here when you come back. Give me that hat. No! I'm gonna make sure nobody can move this piece of junk out of here. Just put a nail in my furniture if you want to. I'm gonna nail every piece of furniture in this house down. Make sure that when you come back, it's just like you left it. You better get somewhere and sit down. Then you nail it down. Don't you take nothing out of here. Because if you do... What? You just take anything out of here and you'll find out what. Fool around directly and make me mad. What's that you say? Nothing. Well, don't be making all them old mumbling sounds. Make me think you're talking about me. I'm talking to myself. I'm not thinking about you. Well, let me know it then. Lord, have mercy. What? I wonder if I remember to put my white stockings in my suitcase. Well, you're not going to open that thing to find out. I'll go down to 39th Street and get you another pair. Would you do that for Mother? All right, I'll run down there and get him. We'll hurry back before Brother gets here. I'll get back as quick as I can. Alberta here. No. She just stepped out for a minute, but you can come on in and sit down. Thank you, ma'am. You seem to know your way around this apartment pretty good. It don't take me too long to get used to a place. I can see that. Stick it out. Ma'am? You and Alberta done got to be right friendly. Yes, sir. You know I'm going to the convocation? You going away? Catching a train for the convocation tonight. Be gone for two weeks. Alberta going with you? No. She's not going. I was wondering, Mr. Jordan, would you do me a favor? Well, anything I can, Mrs. Warren. Will you not come around here while I'm away? Would you mind if I ask why? You know why. I do. You the devil, Mr. Jordan. And my daughter done opened up the door and beckoned you to come in. You don't really believe I'm the devil, Mrs. Warren. I didn't just come into the world yesterday, Mr. Jordan. I know you. Know who you are. Who do you think I am? I've been seeing all you old blind street singers the longest day of my life. I know where you've been, and I know what you've done done. I even know how you got blind, Mr. Jordan. I was born blind. I know that. You do? Probably come from a long line of blind street singers. Yes, I do. How did you know that? Did Alberta tell you? My eye commenced to jump the minute I saw you. And when my eye commences to jump, something ain't right. There's danger afoot. Yes, sir. And that woman you've been looking for. Grace Waters? You still looking for her? I don't know. Lately, I ain't too sure that I am. All I know is that now, when I knock on doors, I sort of hope she won't be there. That thought passed through my mind several times lately. Well, you keep on looking for her, Mr. Jordan. Why? You know why? Alberta. That's right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, ma'am, Alberta. It's not for you. No way whatsoever. Well, how do you know that? Because you a slew foot. Good for nothing but slew footing up and down the road looking for that woman. Well, maybe you're right. Not that I have anything personal against you, Mr. Jordan. No, ma'am. I just make your eye jump. Best thing for you to do is just leave poor Alberta alone. All right, Mrs. Warren, I'll stay away. As long as you're in the neighborhood. I worked all the buildings in this neighborhood. Goodbye, Mrs. Warren. Goodbye, Mr. Jordan. You will keep your promise. I won't bother Alberta no more. Doing an old woman a great kindness. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Mrs. Warren. Hello, Jordan. Oh, Doc. 
How are you, Doc? I'm OK. You still riding that number? To tell you the truth, I only played it once. Well, it came out last week. Yeah, I know. Well, you should have been on it. It was a good number. They are all good if they fall. It's going to fall again in a little while. Triple zeros? I'm telling you. Well, why don't you get on it? Me? Yeah, your money's good as anybody else's. Nah, it wouldn't fall for me. You mean to tell me if you had money on it, it wouldn't have fallen? I'm just not lucky. I can give other people the numbers, but it wouldn't fall for me. Well, maybe I'm the same way. No, it'll fall for you. Well, if I get a few extra dollars, I'll put something on it. You broke, Doc. Not broke, just fractured. You wear a hat, Doc. A derby. Take it off and give it to him. What you doing? I'm filling your hat full of money. Oh, man, I can't take your money. I want you to get on triple zero. Must be 30 or 40 dollars in here. Yeah, you play it every day. You don't even have to box it. No matter what combination it falls in, you win. Hey! See you, Doc. Wait a minute! Can't you say good evening to folks before you head for the jug? Good evening, sister. Rest so strong now, I knock folks down when they pass. You ready to go? Come on, you're going to the train station tonight. I ain't sure I want to ride in that old car anyhow. Now, what's wrong with my car? Nothing. Outside, it's a rattle trap old enough to have driven the Lord to the Last Supper. Look, I ain't got old even. You're going to Montgomery or not. Well, if the gate keeps swinging in the direction it's swinging, I'm going. If the gate should decide to swing in another direction, I might have to change my plans accordingly. Lord, give me the strength to endure. Sister, not only will you endure, but you will prevail. You mind taking my bags back in my room? I've decided not to go. You're not going? I can't go off and leave Alberta here by herself. You know she ain't been well. Well, maybe a little rest from you will be a tonic for her. Of course, if you come over here and stay with her while I'm gone. What for? To look after her. I'd be willing to give you a little something. You gonna pay me to stay here while you're gone? A few dollars. What's a few? More than you got. No, I, I got my own personal life to think about. You see, Pearl keeps me pretty busy. You still fooling with that info. I had to go all the way to 43rd Street to find your service. You could have took your time. We ain't going nowhere. Not going? I ain't settling my mind to go. Mom, you getting on that train. I ain't made up my mind yet. Well, you don't worry me about going. Now, you sure gonna go put these in your purse? Get her suitcase, Uncle Doc. You just gonna make me go. That's right. Say, we start to march it. Well, take this on your arm. Lord willing, I should be back here sitting by my own window come two weeks from this very day. I'll send you a telegram so you and brother can come and pick me up. Come on, Weedy. I'll send you a picture postcard from Montgomery. That is, if I make it to the train station in one piece, you ought to get it in a day or so. Weedy! Be a good girl. Pray for me. I'm off with a drunkard. Make haste. I got a train to catch. Jesus. Jordan. 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 Jordan, can't you hear me calling you, Jordan? Where's that singing coming from? A little storefront church down the street. They sang pretty fair. You were going away, weren't you? You were just going to walk away without even saying goodbye to me. Well, I promised Mrs. Warren. Mama? What did you promise, Mama? That I wouldn't hang around here while she was gone? Don't pay Mama any attention. Yeah, she was right. I shouldn't hang around you. I don't want you to go away, Jordan. But you don't know anything about me, Alberta. I don't need to know anything about you. 
I just don't want you to go away. You, I can't stay around here forever. I've been around here too long as it is. I've already gone through the buildings at least twice. It's time I was moving on. You don't have to do that. You could stay here. Here with you? Be better than walking around begging. Well, how could I go on looking for Grace if I'm staying here with you at the same time? You couldn't. Are you saying you want me to stop looking for Grace? You're never going to find her, Jordan. Well, it don't make no difference whether I do or not. Why do you keep looking for her? It's what I do. Why? I don't know why. Maybe I did when I first started out, but if I did, I've forgotten. All I know is I got to keep on looking for her. It doesn't matter whether I find her or not, as long as I keep on looking for her. Wouldn't it be better living here with me than stumbling by yourself? You want me to live with you? Yes. For how long? No special time. Oh, that would be a special time. One day I'd hear it in your voice. You what in my voice? That special time. I don't understand what you're saying. There's been other women I've stopped off with since I've been looking for Grace. Women that had soft, sweet voices, so I stopped off. Their voice was little inside them. And after I'd been there a while, the voice would start to get bigger and bigger. Oh, for a while they'd still be sweet. But then they would become hard and cracked. And I'd know it's time for me to be moving on again. I'd be back looking for Grace, and I don't think I can stop off again. You're saying that one day I would ask you to leave? Not in words. Oh, you're wrong, Jordan. I wouldn't do that. You'd need something from me. I'd give it to you, and then you wouldn't need me anymore. What is it you think I need? Well, somebody. You're uh... wrong. I don't need anyone. You don't have to lie. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nature. Everybody's got nature one way or another. You think I'm talking about nature? You think that's why I want you to stay here because of nature? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have any nature. Oh, that's not so. If you think that's why I wanted you to stay, you can get out of here right now. That's the only thing that's ever on men's minds. Mama's right. Men are lower than dogs. Well, I reckon I better be getting along. Maybe you better. Don't go, Jordan. I don't want you to go. I don't like a whole lot of fussing. I won't fuss. I promise. Well, I won't fuss. As if I've upset you, I... I'm not upset. I'm not going to let myself get upset. That's all right. Right, don't let yourself get upset. I should have gone to church tonight. Well, why didn't you? I don't know. I haven't been going too much lately. I guess they'll start thinking I've backslid. Oh, have you backslid? No, of course not. I'm still saved. After Emmanuel Fisher's funeral, I haven't been going too much. Who's he? Just a boy. Man, around the church. For Neon? No. No, I, uh, I admired him from afar. You mean you never got close to him? Do you want a little taste? No, thanks. What was she like? Grace Waters? You know who I mean. Now, yeah, what's to say? Was she pretty? Folks said she was. Was she nice? She had a nice voice. What kind of voice is that? Rain dust. Rain dust. It kind of makes you feel. You ever smell rain dust? I don't even know what it is. Down home when it gets so. Scratching hot, you can't stand it anymore. Then when it rained, folks down home would call it a white rain. Mm. Hard and heavy, cool as you could smell. Like the old earth was reborn, as fresh as the morning she was created. That's what she was like. To me, she was. Did she have a lot of nature? She had sufficient amounts. 
I shouldn't have asked you that. It's none of my business. Eh, don't bother me, no. Was she good up on her dress? Yeah, she was very good up on her dress. What's wrong with me? What am I saying? Things like this for? I sound like some old street woman. No, you're no street woman. I sound like one. But you are not. Did you ever think that maybe Grace Waters might be dead? She ain't dead. How can you be sure? Because I would know it if she didn't think it. I couldn't go on looking for her if, if I... Why are you trying to put those words into my head? It's possible. It isn't possible. Is she too good to die? Yes, yes, she is. That's what they said about Emmanuel Fisher. Said he was too good to die. Everybody loved him. Because he was so good. But that didn't stop him from falling out of the sky. He fell out of the sky? Mm. He was learning to be a pilot. First time he went up by himself, the plane crashed. They had to cut him out of the wreckage. Then they had to cut the metal out of his body. He was so good. He was too good to die. And he had a voice. Oh, he had a voice that would make the very angels in heaven weep when he raised his voice in song. Yet God saw fit to let him die. It's a wonder the weeping purple angels didn't just swoop down and lift him up out of that plane and bring him safely to the ground. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. He was so good. I suppose you went to his funeral. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus, I was there. It was the biggest funeral in the history of the church. I mean, that place was really packed. They had to rent extra chairs for the people to sit down. And even in the streets outside the church, people were standing. They came from all over Chicago to say one last goodbye to Emmanuel Fisher. He was so beloved. And they really put him away in style. His mother and father must have spent every penny they had putting him away. He had a, a beautiful powder blue casket lined with gentle white satin. It shined like mirrors. And you never saw so many white roses in your life. There were thousands and thousands of white roses covering his powder blue casket. And his casket was placed so it caught the light from the stained glass window. The light, the yellow light, just fell on his face. He looked. He looked so much like Jesus. <laughs> like a beautiful sleeping Jesus. And they didn't need to paint his face. He was beautiful without makeup. He was even more beautiful in death than he had been in life. And the goodness still shined from his face. And then Reverend Goodlow stood up and asked Agnes Malloy to sing Precious Lord. Do it once for Emmanuel, Sister Agnes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Then I had to read the telegrams. To the bereaved parents of Emmanuel Fisher, our heartfelt sympathy. Signed the Reverend Lord S. Peters, Clarksdale, Mississippi. From Mr. and Mrs. John W. Lucas of Louisville, Kentucky, to the family of Emmanuel Fisher, please accept our deepest condolences at your loss. To the family of Emmanuel Fisher, our deepest regrets.
at the passing of Emmanuel Fisher, Dr. and Mrs. Harold H. Marcus, Augusta, Georgia. Emmanuel Fisher was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi, on the sixth day of June in the year 1925. He was the son of Mr. Joseph Fisher and Mary Ann Lovelace Fisher. Emmanuel Fisher attended Doolittle Grammar School and Wendell Phillips High School. The year after his graduation, he entered Pickering College in the state of South Carolina. While there, he became active in the Christian Young People's Conference and won great recognition for his prize-winning speech, which was later published in the Christian Young People's Conference annual magazine called The Flight of the Purple Angel. In his speech, The Flight of the Purple Angel, he chose to reconcile life with death. That our lives here should be preparation for the life that is to come. For it is this life that is to come which is our reason for being here. And we must earn that life, cleanse ourselves in order to earn that life. For the Father, <laughs> he has created an orchard for us to live in with life everlasting. Emmanuel Fisher asked that when he began that last journey, that his family and loved ones not mourn him. No, do not mourn Emmanuel Fisher. For he is this day sitting on the right hand of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Another voice has raised his voice in song this day. We may not hear that voice because we are too far away. But the purple angels hear, and they weep, and are happy. For Emmanuel Fisher flies. He flies with them. I wish to thank Sister Alberta, for her words. And I, I do not grieve Emmanuel Fisher. Yes, Jesus. For Emmanuel Fisher has gone to glory. Yes, Lord. I said Emmanuel Fisher is sitting in glory. Yes, Jesus. For he has found life here Mercy, Lord, mercy. Even though his earthly body was twisted and mangled beyond repair. Mm. And with his knowledge, could mm. Mm. And even though they could not resurrect that Oh, mercy, Jesus. For that boulder is still running fine. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, the breath of life has been blown yes, Lord. into our brother. Oh. The breath of life that only God can blow into him has been blown back into Oh, him. Emmanuel, Lord, Jesus, glory. And Take Jesus me to Jesus. Tell them to get my crown ready, Emmanuel. Tell them to get my crown ready, Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Tell them I'm coming to Emmanuel. Yes, Jesus. Tell them to get my crown ready. Tell them to get my crown ready. Tell them I'm coming, Emmanuel. I'm going to shout, Jesus. I'm tired of this body. I'm tired of this time. I'm tired of this with the Holy Ghost. Let me jewel with the Holy Ghost. How long? Let me dance. How long? The dance of happiness. How long? I'm going to dance. How long? The dance of happiness. Let me speak in tongues, oh Lord. Just my word that you can do. Jesus, let the meaning of my words be with them, Amen. even for me. Only you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus. Jesus.
Jesus and the beautiful purple angels understand my utterances. Amen. And then they, they wheel his body around for that last final look. Oh, Jesus. Gone, Emmanuel. Let me kiss you once. Never in life did I kiss you. Now in your heart. You're never hidden in sleep. I want to climb into the casket with you, Emmanuel. I'm soaking wet, Emmanuel. <laughs> the sweat is pouring out of me. I want to climb in there with you and baptize you with my body fluids. <laughs> Holy Ghost, take control over me. I can't control myself anymore. Alberta. Oh, no. Alberta. Stop it. Stop Emmanuel. it. Emmanuel. I kissed you. Yes. You're not Emmanuel. No. I want to kiss him. No. I want to kiss him one no. last final time. No. You, no. You're not Emmanuel. No, I'm John. Uh, uh, John. Last of a long line of blind Jordans. Please kiss me. This may be the last drink I'll ever take in this house, sister. Got your little money getting ready to get on down the road. I always said when I hit them numbers, got a few challenges in my pocket, I'd be jumping back to Memphis. Prosperity don't set so good on some folks. You get a little money that gets so beside itself that commence to smell. I'd rather have prosperity set bad on me than have the poor house that said good on me. If you was anything at all, you'd throw that money right back in old Jordan's face. <laughs> I can think a whole lot of things I'd throw in somebody's face before money. You ain't nothing, brother. You just ain't nothing. I would give you 15 cents for the random talk. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'd rather see her dead and in her grave than to turn out like this. Oh, stop that, sweetie. You approve of this kind of conduct? I don't approve or disapprove. No, because you've been cloaking for him all along. <laughs> I ain't cloaking for nobody. She's a full-grown woman. Think you're going down to Memphis and be a big shot again, don't you? Folks down there done forgot you ever existed in this world. Now, how they gonna forget me? Jimmy Sweet, the Prince of Beale Street. Folks done forgot you so long, it ain't even funny. They ain't forgot me. You just get on back down there. You see, might as well stay up here and help me. He ain't never done nothing for her. Why did you have to come back? If you'd have stayed a lot of time out, Jordan might have been gone. Why did you have to come back? Couldn't stay down there. Put you on the train to Montgomery. You were supposed to stay for two weeks. Now you had to bring your behind back here and catch him. That wasn't the convocation I used to know. No, sir, Jesus, it wasn't. That wasn't no more the convocation I used to know than my big toe is. Couldn't you have just stayed down there for the whole time? Them colored folks down there done gone crazy in Montgomery. They just had that whole convocation just turned all the way around. Had to walk everywhere, telling colored folks not to ride the buses. I tell you, I don't know what done got into them folks. I don't walk so much, my feet about to kill me. But why didn't they ride the buses? Oh, Lord, those 
start me to life. Some young preacher down there got them all stirred up, raising sand. They just push all the regular folks right out the convocation. Come into one of our meetings hollering about they didn't want to hear no more fogeyism. Young folks, mess ain't wiped good from their behinds. And they calling folks fogies. Telling colored folks not to ride the bus because they didn't want to sit in the back. People stir up once in a while. Ain't nothing to all that. They say they're going to carry it all over the South. Carry what all over the South? Not riding the buses. Well, let the fools walk if they don't want to ride. Found you will be in Memphis by the time you get there. Now, how's it going to be in Memphis? I heard a woman say that when she got back down to Memphis, she was going to start trying to get the colored folks there not to ride the buses. <laughs> Good people that foolish away from Memphis to know like I know they better. Why can't folks leave things alone? Always stirring up things. Best stay on up here in Chicago. Going to be a whole lot of trouble down home. Not in Memphis. Didn't I just get through telling you? Them folks come to Memphis with their foolishness. Ain't nobody going to pay them a bit more attention they better keep their behinds away from members and know what's good for them. Memphis is a sporting town. They ain't got no time for no mess. Folks out looking to have a good time. You better stay on up here. You be back up here to reckon. Nah, I ain't never come back to Chicago. Not in this life, anyhow. Sister, you're just about the last ones left. Yeah? About the last one's left. Brother, don't you kiss me. We ain't never been a kissing set of folks. No, we never was a kissing set of folks. Hello, Uncle Doc. Hello, Bird. Ain't you two speaking? She doesn't speak to me. Ain't this a... You two sitting up here in this house not speaking to each other? I'll speak to her when she speaks to me. Well, I don't approve of this, Albert, and not speaking to your mother. What you want me to do? I've tried to talk to her, but she won't answer me. Looks at me like something dirty laying in the street. Well, it was a kind of a shock for her to come home and find you laying up and... Laying up with the man I ain't married to? Well, you know your mother doesn't go in with that sort of thing. And besides, it's not a nice thing to do. You got a lot of nerve, Uncle Doc. After all the women you've laid around with in your life. Oh, them chicks were nothing. They want my flesh and blood. What about Mama and Reverend Goodlow? What about them? You think I don't know? Listen, I, I got to pick up Pearl and get my suitcase. You're not driving? No, I sold my car. And remember, she's your mother. I remember. Oh, yes, I remember. I'll pick you up on my way back from the station. Mama? I've been drinking, I've been scorned. Mama, I have to talk to you. I've been drinking, I've been scorned. Mama, we have to move. Here's a letter from the city says this building has been condemned and they're going to tear it down. I've been scorned. Mama, you're going to have to loan me the uh, money to find another apartment. I ain't got no money. Mama, you've got some money. All I got is my little pension check, and I give that to Reverend Goodlow to put on my borough policy. We'll have to cash it I in. Cash it in? No, sir, Jesus. Mama, we have to move. Uh, They're going to tear the building down. Do you understand? The building has been condemned. We can't stay here. Mama, you don't have to stay here. Papa is not coming back. I ain't waiting for him to come back. I wish that thing would come stepping up here after the way he run off. I'd set his soul to rest. I'd spit in his face. Every time that thing crosses my mind, I get mad. You silly old woman. Tell you something, heifer. If you don't know who you fooling with, you better ask somebody. And don't be hollering at me, because I'll lay you cold in the milkshake. And you needn't be rolling your eyes and poking out your mouth like you don't like it. And if you don't like it, you better smile and play like you do. And you needn't be acting like you're getting ready to try me, neither. Because if you do, I'll hurt you. I'm not getting ready to try you. I know you ain't. Not unless you done lost your mind. I'm trying to explain to you. We have to move. I guess I'd better go lay down. Mama, the building is condemned. What are you howling about, Heifer? I ain't deaf. 
Ain't you got sense enough to know I hear you? That woman is gonna drive me to... Oh, one die was all that I had. One die was all that I had. If one die carried that poor boy through, what time does Doc say he's coming back? If he doesn't hurry up, he'll be the Mr. Stray. What time does the train leave? 6.30. What time is it now? About 5. Hey, you still got an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Mama, don't treat your daughter Mr. me. Mr. Jordan. Yes, ma'am. Mama, don't start. I ain't starting nothing. I just want to ask Mr. Jordan a question. What is it, Mrs. Warren? Are you planning to vacate the premises anytime soon, or have you decided to make this your permanent headquarters? Mama! I just want to know so I can make my plans accordingly. He doesn't have to answer you anything. What is it you really want to know, Mrs. Warren? You don't have to answer. I don't pay any attention, Jordan. Why do you always have to keep up the devil? What is it you want Alberta to know? How many red light houses do you reckon you played your music box in, Mr. Jordan, sir? You played in red lighthouses. What do you know about red lighthouses? Oh, I didn't cover a whole lot of road. You you played in red lighthouses? Quite a few. Red light houses. I was born in a red light house. The same house, the same room, the exact same bed that my father was born in. A place called the Sty of the Blind Pig. A house down in New Orleans. He's got the smell of blood on him, Alberta. I could smell it the minute he walked into this house. How do you know so much about it? Sure as I'm standing here, he's got the smell of blood on him. That's right. I do have the smell of blood on me. The smell of butchered pig. Is that getting your pores and you can't wash it off? I don't smell anything. I can smell it on myself. I can smell the bowels of the pig. All the parts that others threw away, they brought to the sty, and it was cooked in scald and hot water. Sometimes that hot water was thrown into a man's face. Did you ever hear a man scream when he's scalded with the hot water that a pig been cooked in? It started with the butchering of the pig. Men died in the sty of the blind pig. So did women. What kind of women? Women who sold their bodies in the sty of the blind pig. Women that carried knives and cut their pimps when the shame overtook them. Pimps who cut up their women because they'd lost their manhood. I played my music box in places where men and women stood toe to toe and cut each other to pieces for cursing their mothers for birthing them into the world. They've fallen on me with the blood oozing out of them, and I can smell the flesh of the pig mixed with their blood. You're making this up. And those that were left from Saturday night got up and went to church on Sunday morning to pray for those who were slaughtered the night before. She told you to say all this, didn't she? She told him nothing. Lies. You're making this all up. Why, Jordan? Because you want to go and hunt for Grace Waters again? Making it up? Haven't you seen this? No! Looks like somebody done tried to cut <laughs> your guts out. Ain't you seen it? No, and I don't want to see it. Look at it! Put your shirt down. How could you lay it up with me and not see it? I've never noticed. You want to know how I got it? No. A woman gave it to me. What woman? No, I don't want to hear about it. What woman put her mark on you, Mr. Jordan? A woman that I killed. I choked her to death while she was trying to cut me to death. Then why ain't you in jail? Because there ain't no punishment for killing a nigger woman on Saturday night. You just go to church on Sunday and pray. This is what you've been laying up with. This is what you brought into this house. You any better than he is. What? Morning! 
down to the church, carrying on with Reverend Goodlow. What you talking about? You've been going with him now for over 40 years. Where'd you hear all this? Why do you think Papa ran off? Because he didn't have no grit in his car. We found out about you and Reverend Goodlow. Who's been accusing me of Reverend Goodlow ever since before we left the house? Reverend Goodlow was passing the church down there. And he swore up and down I was messing around with him. And you kept on when you got up here. I didn't even know that man was in Chicago when we moved up here. Where'd you hear all this? Everybody around that church knows it. I guess Papa got tired of everybody pointing at him like he was a fool. That ain't why he ran off. I know better. He ran off because he didn't believe the two was his. Didn't believe I was... Yes. He kept accusing me of Reverend Goodloe for so long. He commenced to see him in you. You a liar! Call me a liar. I bound I slap you clean in the next week. Daddy, with a strange old way. Never did think he could make a baby. All the while I was carrying you, he kept hollering about he was too weak to make a baby. Was I? What? Was I his? Get away, girl. Tell me the truth! Get away from me, girl! I'll walk you like Christ walked the water. Mmm! Mmm! <gasps> I wish... I had never laid eyes on either one of you two. <gasps> What's that? What's that, Sister Martin always hollers out? <gasps> How long? done gone. The star of the blind pig is torn down. Even the blind street singers are dying out. <laughs> well, let them all die out. Let us all die out. And make room for somebody else. The sooner. He's not coming back. Did you tell him not to come back? No. But you know he's not coming back. Yes. Was he ever really here? Hmm? Oh, I was just wondering something out loud. Who? Hmm. What was that? Just something that passed through my mind. Well, brother's riding now. Mm-hmm. Riding south. I wonder where all them young folks was going. Young folks? Didn't you see him? Got on the same train with brother. Sure looked a mess. And one of them had nappy hair. <laughs> <laughs> nappy hair. Looked like they could have gone to the beauty parlor and got the hair straightened before they went off visiting. <laughs> yes, I saw them. <laughs> they did all have nappy hair, didn't they? Funny, I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. But now that you mention it, Never had I gone off traveling with my head looking like that. <laughs> Sometimes I wish that I hadn't started straightening mine. Maybe it wouldn't be half burned out now. You know, I, I was thinking something. You find us a place. I'll speak to Reverend Goodlow, and maybe we can draw out something from my funeral savings claim. Oh, you don't have to do that. Well, if they're going to condemn the building, they probably won't be tearing it down for a little while yet. You think they 
we ought to stay here until they commence to destroy it right over our heads? Ain't no need in getting in a rush now. You think we got time? Time enough, I reckon. Well, whatever you want to do is all right with me. All right. From now on in, I guess that everything's up to you. Up to me. If you want to draw out all the money from the funeral plan, it's all right with me. Now you say that. After it's all over and done with, you say that? What's all over and done with? Everything. I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. Why don't you go to bed, Mama? Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? Everything's all over and done with. You know what I mean, Mama. No, I don't. You just think about it. Sleep on it. It'll come to you. Tired as I am, I won't think about nothing. All I want to do is lay my head on that pillow. Good night. Good night. Strut. Strutting like she was the best looking thing on the street. Hey, you! Yes, I'm talking to you. You sure ought to go somewhere and take off that red dress and do something about your behind shaking. <laughs> it's bouncing like a rubber ball. You needn't be trying to ignore me. You hear me? These young folks ain't a bit of count nowadays. They just ain't nothing. They ain't even much what the birds left. Like I was just saying to Mama just the other day, Mama. Mama. Mama, where are you, Mama? Mama? Come back, Mama. Oh, Mama. You land out there? All by yourself. Mm. <laughs> Mama! I got grit in my crawl. I got a whole lot of grit. 